Hey everybody, I'm artist Micah Gogan, and today I'm here with a very important question. What would happen if gel press gel plates married ampersand art panels? The result is you'd have ready to hang artwork. Today we're gonna to be looking at the monoprint process while we create desert botanicals that have beautiful decorative edges. <laughs> So let's begin by reviewing our supplies. We're going to start off with a 5x7 gel press gel plate. And I've actually accommodated an image that's also 5x7. We're going to be doing a desert botanical. This specifically is a type of succulent called Pablo's Choice. And what I've done is I've actually inverted the image. So I flipped it so that when I print it, it will actually come out um, the right way that I want. So it's reflexive. And we're actually going to be printing on the ampersand artist panel, and this is the Prime Smooth. What's unique about Prime Smooth, aside from its ultra smooth finish, but it's gesso coated and ready to go, and even the sides are coated. So we're going to do some custom embellishment on the side just to give it a little bit of a kick. But it's all the um, ampersand quality that you've come to expect at a value price. We're going to work with um, some silver white silver brush uh, brushes. The Brushes are supple enough that they are going to absorb and lift the paint, uh, but they're also soft enough that they're going to be gentle on the surface of the gel plate. We're going to be using golden open acrylics. These are slow drying acrylics, great for printmaking effects. I've got Indian yellow, pyrrole red, and manganese blue. These are going to be three colors that are going to give us this uh, soft desert palette that we're looking for. And then I also have uh, my favorite brayer and I've got a little paint palette over here that I can use for the paint later on and we're going to do some surface embellishment later in the video with um, a little bit of golden fluid acrylic but we'll get to that in a moment. Okay so I'm going to um, start off by taking my lightest color. I always prefer to start with the uh, lightest or in this case it's going to be the Indian yellow and I'm going to put about a pea size amount of paint on the plate. And then I'm going to take my brayer and I'm just going to work it both ways to get a nice coating on the plate. Now how much paint is enough paint? Well if you cannot see the image underneath the paint then you have too much paint on the image itself. So in this case I'm losing a lot of detail. I can kind of see what's going on but I don't really see much. So if that's the case you can always take a paper towel and you can just kind of discharge some of the extra paint on the paper towel and then you can lift back on the plate. So because it's a, a clean brayer, it's gonna pull some of the excess paint, and you can do that as many times as you need to until you can see the surface. Now because the ampersand panel is such a smooth surface, it's not gonna take much paint on here at all to get color and layering effects. So I'm going to just make sure that I've got a smooth coat of yellow, which I do, and then um, if you've not watched any of the past videos on the subtractive method, you can look those up. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the brush and wet it. And I'm just going to tap the excess moisture on a paper towel. And then I'm going to edge just like when we were kids, perhaps. I don't know if y'all colored like this, but I would always trace my lines so that I could get a good outline. And then once I had the outline, I would go back and swipe. I'm going to do this real quick. And then I'm going to go in and remove some of the excess in between. So the background is blue, so I'm going to take away anything that doesn't serve the purpose of blue. If it's not yellow or a yellow mixture, I'm going to take it out of the plate. Okay, then you can also take the paper towel and I'm just going to work it around my finger and then I can actually go in if I want really solid clean, I'm going to just lift that out. Now, now I want to create a little bit of light, lighting on the actual um, plan itself. So this is the reflexive version, but you can see that there's a little bit of light um, on the left side here. It'll be reflexive, so it'll be on the right side. So I'm just going to go to all of the right sides 
and pull some more of that paint out so I can really see the light. Now I'm going to take the ampersand panel and because it's five by seven to do a registration, I'm just going to touch both sides of the plate with my finger and then I'm just going to run the panel right up to the sides of the finger too. And that's going to be my registration. When I drop it down, registration means that, that it lines up on all sides. And when I drop it straight down, it'll essentially go right on top. Now I did tape my paper down to keep it stable during this process, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently lift up because this is a rigid panel. So when I go to press down, I'm making contact with the hard surface, not the soft plate. So I want to lift my image up and flip it over so that when I do my little gel press massage, I can actually feel the tactile squishiness of the plate. That's going to help me make contact and get rid of any air bubbles. And I'm just going to rub, rub, rub to make sure I get all the corners. Okay. And then once I'm done, I'm going to flip this guy over. And I'm going to adhere my tape back down so I don't pull the plate off the paper. And I'm just going to hold the paper down. And I'll you. There's my yellow and notice how i've got my highlighted surface now one cool thing about this um the panel with the smooth prime here is that if i want to continue to pull out images i can take the wet brush and because this is so smooth and because the acrylics are still wet i can just pull out more of that paint it's just going to gloss right over and so I can highlight, if I want to put paint back down, like maybe this is too bright, I can just put some residue back down or smudge in. And that's another benefit of the Smooth Prime. I'm going to take out some of these connecting lines. You see? So you can still kind of manipulate the surface, but I'm not having to draw or, you know, concern myself um, with any of the technical aspects of it. I'm going to lift out just a little bit more of this yellow so this doesn't turn green. Okay. Nice. Get a little bit more out there. Wet a little highlight here. Just to show you that we can pull it all the way back to white. Boop. See? All right. So now I'm going to clean my um, brayer and I'm going to clean my plate and I'm going to go in for the second color. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of pyrrole red. fun part is that you know it's just hazy playful um, anything that I don't catch I can take off of the plate exactly so I'm gonna register again and I'm gonna do it the same way holding my fingers down and Ali oop and I'm pressing down the plate and then I'm gonna lift up the paper gentle massage Flip back over, adhere, adhere, lift up. Well, wow. okay. Now I'm going to repeat the process now with the blue. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of my manganese blue, put that bad boy down.
registration and kerplunk. Flip it over. Massage it out. What I have here is a translucent, um, got lots of layers, all the little air bubbles and little texture that came up. It just really made for a nice uh, residue and a nice finish. And now I'll just embellish. So now we're gonna create a little bit of embellishment. And you can take iridescent colors like um, the pearl here, or you can take the, what we're gonna use is the interference red. And these are just titanium flakes that are painted with uh, iridescent color. In this case, it's red. And we're gonna put a little bit of this fluid acrylic onto a palette. And I'm gonna take the um, silver brush, one of the more supple ones, and I'm just going to get a little bit of that interference red. And you can already see the, the shimmer that's on it. And I'm just gonna go in and adhere into some of the sections, making sure that this is dry, of course, because I don't wanna pull or disturb any of my gel plate layer. But I'm just adding a little bit of embellishment. What this is gonna do is create a little bit more interest whenever um, the piece is catching light. It's just gonna make it a little bit more exciting. And I'm just going to highlight those red sections. Okay. And then maybe I'll take a finer brush and do some of the tips. That might be cool. Real playful. Okay, then I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to take some traditional colors, um, maybe some uh, gold, something that kind of complements what's going on just to keep the iridescent. But then I'm going to use some of the same colors that I used in the palette. So I've got some of my pyrrole red, I've got some of my manganese blue. And since I have the gold, I'm not going to use the Indian yellow but I will put a little bit of uh, Titan Buff, which is an off-white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put uh, a color swipe on the side of the panel just to indicate the colors that were used. So I can put just a swipe, spacing as close or as far apart as I want. Doesn't have to be any rhyme or rhythm. Go around each side.
Now for some final embellishment, I'm actually going to go around the primed edges and put color swatches of fluid acrylic. The fluid acrylic is going to be repeats of colors that we've already used in the open, which is like the manganese blue. You could use the open acrylic, um, it would just take longer to dry. And I'm actually going to just take various color swatches and just apply them on, going around pretty um, generously. You can skip as many spaces as you want. You can alternate. You may have to go through and put second coats down. I don't care about the colors overlapping and mixing at all. And I'm just going to bridge the gap with various colors. So here I'm going to take a little bit of the buff, put some cream color down, maybe overlap here. Uh, overlap here a little bit, overlap here, and just fill in any remaining colors. Okay, and then once you have everything, you can let it dry. And then I'm going to take a black Posca paint pen, and I can go in and create a little bit more mark making just to enhance the drama. And then this offsets any lines that perhaps just gotten adjusted a little bit in the printmaking if the registrations didn't come out quote unquote perfect. Then you can tighten that up a little bit just by creating some loose mark making. Okay, and then we could just continue on until the end result. And the end result, you might have, you know, two that you put together and make a diptych out of them. Um, and then we'll even secure by And as we continue the embellishment, you can even bring in a reflexive piece and have a little diptych. And of course, we'll finish it off with a wire hanger on the back. So that way your gel print is finished and ready to hang.